Greetings everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Happy Monday. Here's your daily news report and fourth stimulus check update. In today's video, I will be bringing you up to date on the latest stimulus news and information. Republican Senator Susan Collins is pushing for a new targeted bipartisan infrastructure deal. Food banks across the United States are bracing for a surge in demand for food aid due to Republican governors ending federal unemployment benefits early. But there are some states that are considering an unemployment benefit boost. This Friday evening, everyone, I will be giving away more $75 Amazon gift cards. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video, and please remember to leave a comment below. Thank you so much, everyone. Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine advocated for a targeted, responsible infrastructure package with bipartisan backing as a group of senators attempts to broker a deal with the White House to rebuild the nation's roads, bridges, and waterways. Senator Collins said in an interview, We have five Republicans and five Democrats who got together to hammer out the framework for a targeted, responsible infrastructure package. Discussions on an infrastructure bill between the White House and a group of Republican senators led by Senator Shelley Moore Capito broke down last week after the two sides failed to reach a consensus on the scope of a plan and how to pay for it. But a group of senators, including Collins, composed of five Republicans and five Democrats that launched their own negotiations, announced they reached a deal. The plan includes $579 billion in new spending over five years, a significant increase from the offer by the GOP senators, and is focused specifically on physical infrastructure. Senator Collins said the package would not include a gas tax increase, nor roll back the changes made in the 2017 tax reform bill approved by the Republican-controlled Congress and signed by the former president. Collins said, one way that it differs is that it includes provisions for resiliency, for strengthening the materials that we use to build our roads, for strengthening the materials that we use to build our roads and bridges, and to strengthen our electrical infrastructure. It includes some energy provisions that are important to the administration and to many of our members as well. To pay for their measure, Collins detailed three mechanisms, an infrastructure financing authority, repurposing funding approved by Congress in March for crisis relief, and a provision for electric vehicles for use of roads and bridges. However, President Joe Biden has proposed raising the corporate tax rate from 21% to 28% to cover the cost of his plan, though Republicans balk at that suggestion. While President Biden's initial infrastructure plan included child care and elder care, Senator Collins said the plan from the bipartisan group of senators focused specifically on traditional infrastructure, such as roads, bridges, seaports, airports, waterways, and broadband. So everyone, what do you consider as infrastructure? I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Please leave them in the comment section below. Food banks in many states across the United States are bracing for a surge in demand for food aid due to Republican governors ending federal extended unemployment benefits early in a move that will hit millions of American families. Several states across the United States have started to voluntarily end federal extended unemployment benefits as Republican governors in at least 25 states have announced intentions to do so. The states of Missouri, Alaska, Iowa, and Mississippi were the first states to cancel federal unemployment aid on June 12th, with the rest of the states following suit through July 10th. That is several weeks before federal benefits guaranteed by the American Rescue Plan are scheduled to expire on September 6, 2021. Cuts will end or reduce benefits for about 4 million unemployed workers. Food insecurity among Americans surged during the crisis and has remained significantly higher than pre-pandemic levels. According to the U.S. Census Bureau data, more than 20 million adults said in late May their households did not get enough food to eat, sometimes often in previous seven days, compared to 8.5 million adults who didn't get enough to eat at some point 
through all of 2019. Experts say that we might see a spike again in July and August as Americans continue to lose their unemployment benefits. The food bank also expects a surge in requests for help in applying for SNAP benefits as the unemployment benefits expire. Half of all states in the country have opted out of federal unemployment benefits early, which is set to impact an estimated 4 million U.S. workers and cost states' economies $12 billion. Louisiana lawmakers have issued a legislative ultimatum to Louisiana Governor John Edwards. The GOP-dominated legislature passed a bill introduced by a Democratic representative that would increase the state's unemployment benefits by $28 weekly, but only if the governor ends the state's participation in federal benefits by July 31st. So do you all think the Louisiana governor should end unemployment benefits early? Please everyone leave your thoughts in the comment section below. So that is the end of the video for this morning. I hope you found this video helpful today. This coming Friday evening, I will be giving away more $75 Amazon gift cards. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, like and share the video, and also please remember to leave a comment below. Thank you so much everyone and have a very blessed Monday. First one, Crenshaw of Texas, welcome. You're recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, important hearing, you know, we're talking about resiliency to uh, weather and, a and I'll, I'll, I'm going to focus on flooding because uh, look, we're used to the heat and uh, we're used to floods. So in, in Houston, um, but we, we got, we got to get our, our facts straight and understanding the problem so that we can arrive at the right solutions because oftentimes it rains here, uh, rains a lot here. And then we hear that, well, that's climate change. That's what climate change looks like. But, but the thing is, and, and, and this, I'm not, and I'm not denying climate change, of course, but what we do have to get straight is the rhetoric surrounding it. Um, we are in a humid subtropical, subtropical climate. We're on the Gulf of Mexico, 10 winding waterways. Uh, we have historically, uh, we're historically prone to flooding. This last month, everybody was talking about, it was May, that we had 11 inches of, uh, of, uh, of rain overall and it was considered ex exceptional. Um, it's actually the median, and you know, I can go back to 1888, and just from that far back, you can find 11 inches of rain for the month. So it does happen, it's not going to change anytime soon. We hear that we've had more 500 year floodplains or 500 year floods in the last decade than ever before, but this is actually a clever distraction from the real point because the 500 year flood is an insurance term, and that floodplain boundary changes based on urban development. So if we're trying to prove that it's associated with, with climate change, we'd have, to, we'd have to talk about rainfall and we haven't seen that data yet. I'm not saying we won't. Um, indications say that we might and we, should, and we should reduce carbon emissions 